All right. So today's prompt, I mean, yesterday's prompt was scrape. I have an idea. We got to really take a look at scrapes. Seems like most of the stuff that is associated with scrapes are dealing with animal scratch marks. So let's take a look at scratch marks. Maybe something that's like uh, a little bit more involved. So I do see that, uh, okay. A lot of the, a lot of it is like one path, right? You have like one really dark path where the claw went through. And then there's some variation. So a lot of people I think a lot of the examples have when the claw goes through it creates like a dark path but depending on how the thing that's being scratched through <clears throat> some people have the frayed ends pointed inward because the material was tight like it was very tight and it just stayed separated but most of the individuals samples at least i see when the claws go through the fabric the fabric uh the fabric let goes of the tension and like flips outward from the path and i kind of like that it creates it creates a uh, a place to draw draw like the form like the path and then it gives another depth it gets a little depth from uh... so we're gonna try that maybe use one of these maybe use some of these the guide. I mean, I wonder how the artist deliberately put pinks in it. It's really refined, though. You can make them really refined. Oh, and there's a taper. So the, the claw scratches, there are two on the full path there's a taper in the beginning and a taper at the end but yeah it kind of looks very random most of the claw mark things are pretty random they're very uh, irregular oh m most of them seems like uh they just Ooh, this one's a little Okay. Some of them use just triangles, like straight lines up and down. I like these irregular ones. Kind of nice. It's a little rather pleasant to look at. Um, I wanna. There's definitely something I wanna. I want a, a decent pattern or all right so we'll use this one this will be a good gauge <laughs> all right okay but before I draw that I kind of want to I'm gonna cheat a little or not really cheat but I want to draw something or the composition and I'm probably turn that into an emote or turn this into an emote 
at some t at some point. So let's try this. I haven't drawn like an emote style thing in a really in a pretty long while. Let's see. Let's see if I can still do this. We have our square. Okay, so. Hmm. Where do we start? Um. Hey, I've forgotten how to draw. <laughs> I forgot how to draw my. Uh... I forgot how to draw my OC. See some was the dude something like this? I'm trying to draw the dude from <clears throat> from memory, but uh that's that's gonna be a little difficult. Um Pick the eyes are, but we'll just say the start. Uh, those eyes are a little bit too big, and I think I did something like this before. Eyes are too narrow. <clears throat> At least it kind of looks narrow. I think, like it, <clears throat> I think it was softer ears, probably. Oops. I started drawing on the background. Dang it. No. I think it was more like here. Something like this. Alright. So. Yeah, we totally shouldn't have started drawing on the background. It's awkward. Um. Kind of want to make him look up, I guess. <clears throat> Maybe like. I, mean, I kind of still remember what the dude looks like. I think I, I think I, I think I got it, but, uh, let's, 
<laughs> Let's add another. Let's add another white backdrop because I totally jumped the gun here. Oops. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, what we want to do is we want to shrink these. Uh, actually, I don't want to move the eyes. Okay. Draw another. It's like a picture. Um, that kind of drew the perspective of. I guess I need to apply for nope that doesn't work I'll just have to separate them myself. I don't understand how people use that tool. It actually, <clears throat> it's actually very confusing. Okay. Um. Honestly. Hmm. Nah. Mm. Okay. Um. I need to get like a tutorial on on that stuff. So let's let's just do it ourselves, right? I kinda want him. To look a little bit the angle of the eyes that is making it look weird okay so hmm so it's going this way and
accidentally made the made one a little bigger than the last one. Hmm. I don't. I actually don't mind this. How big I. Oh, how big this is. I don't think the perspective is going to be <laughs> correct on this, but it's fine. I haven't drawn this dude in a very long while. <laughs> now, how, how could you be angry about that one? <laughs> I can already picture it. Pretty funny. <laughs> it's so Extra tiny is actually kind of funny, but it wouldn't be visible anymore. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, that means okay. So, we have to okay. So, we have to pick the angle, right. And then it has to, okay, the composition, the scratch is gonna, the scrape marks are gonna have to be like, I guess we're just gonna compositionally, it's probably, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. It, it's the correct orientation. I, have to, I don't have to flip the dude. It looks okay. So we kind of want this to come down sooner. Oh wait. Was it the other way around? Actually, it's the other way around. Thank you. 
Oh, wait. I could do, like... Oh, how do I do that? Um... No, I, I don't... No, I don't, I don't think they do that, but, uh, no, we're not going to do that. that that's, uh, it's really hard for me to comprehend right now. Like, get the, get the ears to droop? I, I don't really know. I mean, the ears, no. He's kind of... a bit larger okay it's good enough i'm pretty satisfied that i remember at least some of the details all right not bad not bad no still got it still got it goes to show you that uh when you make something of your own it's very difficult to forget I swear i swear this is gonna be spammed all the time freak this is most definitely a spammable emote <laughs> It's gonna be difficult to capture this though. On the down res. Once this get down res, it's gonna be difficult to uh Alright, so let's take a look at this. Um Like, how can you be angry with that, right? <clears throat> I still like this pen. I still like this pen far more than the ones that I've experimented with. This pen suits me so well. Thank you to whoever like originally did this pen. It's a default pen, but you know, someone created it and, and included it in the program. Kind of want it to be like a little bit. Mm, it's subtle. Really important that I kind of get like a, a slight angle on it. This one is kind of more dead on. Yep. Mm. 
and we're like making this a little bit closer. Actually, probably. Uh, one day I'm gonna probably give this guy an update and make make it even more recognizably fine, I guess. Not that it's really all that important because I mean just some simple shapes to be honest it's relatively unremarkable it's just an emo although with that said I guess I I'm trying to say to say it very lightly because uh while I disagree with or while I may have a different opinion about in intellectual property and its value have to be respectful of those who do it for a living but the requirements at least in my opinion, the skills required for it is fairly attainable in a short amount of time. Dedication. Uh. Now doing it a lot, that's a whole different story.
We don't need that extra line, to be honest. Like, you can't really, you're not gonna be able to tell. So we're gonna have to eliminate some lines for like the, when this gets de to smithereens because of the resolution limit, we, we would get rid of a lot of lines. A lot of the lines are gonna disappear in the end. Just the nature, nature of the beast. That wasn't too terrible. 30, 30 minutes. Well, we'll say like 20 minutes to make the line drawing of an emote. And then this would take maybe 15 minutes to color. If you think about like how much charge for these things, like you have to make so many of these in so little time. Even break even with like an hourly wage. So kudos to all those people who make these things. tough like um what if you say i mean some you know like just as a side note i guess at least from my impressions if you haven't done the thing you start thinking about like what's the value of something like this well unfortunately and maybe fortunately I've had some of the experience of being at one end of the conversation and at the other end of the conversation where someone would say like man dude what was it 30 bucks for a set of three three emotes or maybe even six emotes from someone from a different like not on Fiverr or something right and uh, say on Fiverr I don't know if this is still true but you can find like a set of emotes six emotes just fairly simple form maybe two layers of shading you can probably pump out those six in maybe an hour right and that's five bucks if you put it into perspective even if you're not an artist or someone doing this task you think to yourself it's like that's five dollars an hour and you start thinking well it doesn't stop those the the people that I've had this conversation with from saying like dude five bucks to draw this stuff I could do it in in that time it's like even if you could do it in that time I'm sure you can appreciate the idea of five dollars an hour like that is I mean I live in the United States so I can say like that is 30% of minimum wage. So if you start thinking about that and someone says, oh yeah, it, you know, it's cookie cutter. You take one and, and then bend it to someone's OC and do it really quickly. It's easy, easy five bucks. It's not an, it's an easy five bucks, but it's not an efficient five bucks. You have to make on a daily basis, I would say the average emo artist would have to make 30 in an hour. And maybe you sell them for five bucks for every six. So then you could get $30 an hour, possibly. And then you have to do that. 
every day and you multiply that by eight so that's like and then we're we're talking about like the cheapest we're talking about being efficient like taking the the um taking the ye old uh fujinese business volume approach to to getting that volume and and then you start thinking about food services which my family has done for the first 18 years of my life longer but for when i'm alive for the first 18 years of my life to remain competitive my family sold this is like you know just a story that i wanted i i shared a couple of times already like um my parents became extremely competitive and it was they sold a lot made some money but i would say is disproportionate to how how difficult it was to maintain that amount of uh, that cost you bought one prepared day of fried chicken wing and it was like a dollar a wing now if you think about it today right even if you account for inflation each of the wings would still be like three to four dollars and when i talk when i'm saying a wing i don't mean yeah sure you don't you don't want the tip the wing tip part and all that but you still don't get that value and you know every time i visit about full wild wings or something i sit there order my wings got that pick out my sauces and stuff and it comes to an average of like five dollars a wing now it might not seem like a lot you know nowadays restaurants like that that, ru that are run by my parents they're still at like two and a half dollars a wings possibly so sure you might think two and a half dollars five dollars what's the big deal that's over 200 percent so when you think about how often you eat wings, every single wing is 200%. You order 16 wings, you're down $8. If you eat at Buffalo Wild Wings or something once a week, <clears throat> that's $36 every month, at least. Wait, I do the math right? Sorry, $30 a month. Well, actually, well, you get the point. It scales up. And when you start thinking about all that, man, things get a little sus. So, you know, I'm not making light of this stuff. Even doing this for fun is, it's hard to not think of the perspective of someone who wants to do this for a living uh every time i learn something new or a new skill you start thinking about how your appreciation for the craft has changed yet i do feel like those who trivialize or devalue something without having done it themselves it could be worth a while to try to do it and see, see if your perspective changes. It doesn't have to change, obviously, because um, sometimes people just don't change their mind, even if they did it. So, in to me, most uh, I'm just speaking personally, right? Um, it generally changes every time I try a new skill. Or learn a new skill. Gives that really this like very important experience. Just most things created by human construct is competitive in a way, and if it's a service, it's even more competitive. And co competition drives 
I, I say this a lot and I, you know, I'm usually a consumer uh, from a consumer perspective. Competition drives prices low, but it drives people. It, it endangers people's livelihoods. So it's a really, really unfortunate balancing act. While on the consumer side, it's like great competition, great drives price down, drives innovation. But behind all that are people making less money. And it's a tough ask. Like, am I happy that I get to pay less for something? Sure, like, I have less resources too. At the same time, as you think about competition and innovation, and you think, you take, you, as a consumer, you would naturally start taking things for granted, like, you're talking about your hard-earned money trying to buy a product but you're engaged in a behavior that created the situation involved in your low income in the first place so it's like a really vicious cycle on the one hand i would love lots of things cheap but because of that mentality that i'm enabling the professions that I've gotten to comes cheap too. So it's difficult and some, sometimes I only feel empathy and I only empathize with, or it feels like I only empathize with limit. What really just comes down to is limited resources. And you might not view the, you know, many people might find this a little disagreeable, but customers are the limited resources. And those customers also are limited by their resources. So when you're offering a service, if you're into a business that offers a service, it's natural to start viewing your customers as numbers or customers as a limited resource. So you are competing for that limited resource. And that becomes a little impersonal. And when the things become impersonal, you start getting things like big corporation behavior and whatnot. Like for instance, uh, it's a, it's not, it's been a while now, but I remember someone coming in and accusing me of like copying something a couple of times really but it really just came down to um there's only so limited ways of aesthetically producing something that is recognizably viral and being too obtuse and niche to be mainstream and uh one of them would be a red panda or tons of red panda emotes and sure enough <laughs> sure enough sure enough um to me since i'm doing this for fun i don't mind anyone who thinks like they can use this but the thing I keep in mind is you might think, oh, if I do this, that's a win-win, right? I make things for free and people can use it. What I just mentioned, the system at work, if you do this, you have to know that you are out competing just for fun. Even for fun, you are out competing people who live by offering this service. So while this is relevant to something I'm going to talk about in an hour with Eric, but uh, Linus Tech Tips, I absolutely love Linus, like his vision of um, keeping corporations honest and like not keeping them honest in the sense that they're dishonest in the first place. It's just to like as a second avenue of self-check and QCing. We're going to talk about this later, but he has this grand vision and I'm seeing all these videos putting up. It's fantastic. 
at the same time he is com out competing he's going to attempt to put into question all the livelihoods and work and QCing process throwing shade at all the people that built the industry that gave him the flexibility to evaluate products in the first place so he's kind of like being very gung-ho about it but i hope in the future he'll be like yes this is just to raise awareness these are resources but that's how to improve the industry and move the industry not to create um indie toxicity or like not to dispel and damage reputation like the intent is to keep things accurate and honest not to use it as a form of witch hunting and boycotting however i'm pretty sure he's well aware because he's a youtuber and he's you know he has many businesses that it, this the stuff that he's doing is fire it's like oil and fire and it takes one spark to show that people could exploit what he's doing out of genuine charity to inform people could be end up using as a weapon to disrupt and cancel things because they you know the internet has this where there's for every one person who wants to be compassionate and reasonable about second chances and reliability and all that stuff and trust there are i would argue there are more people who are distrusting and cynical and nihilistic so um we'll talk about that later though but it comes all the way back to whenever i do something that's what i think of um people's perception of quality and stuff i started thinking uh, it, it's related to a lot of other things that i was thinking of doing after october is over but anyways can you get mad at this this is gonna be the new emote fetishes i haven't drawn a new emote in a while and it only took me 30 minutes to do it which is great new emote but this isn't like the final thing because uh, this is 2000 by 2000. It's going to look a, a lot more scuffed or it's going to look a lot more basic. Like all the extra lines are going to disappear and all that stuff because you can't, you can't shrink this down to hold up. Did they even change? Wait, 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 wait. I don't even know if Twitch ever changed their emotes. Like I'm just going to upload it to, uh, um, 7TV or FFZ, obviously. But, uh, I don't really know if emo dimensions ever changed. Um. Because I'm not going to mo monetize this stuff. Like, what the heck? I'll just add it to everything. Uh, it's... One twenty eight by one twenty eight is the high def and the size that you're looking at that's occurring in the box is thirty two thirty two. Yeah, that's that's tough. Like I have to shrink this down to I, I I'm actually kinda curious what it looks like when you shrink it down. Hold up. Let's scale the thing down to uh thirty two thirty two just out of curiosity so there it is there it is do you see it <laughs> see this is what it looks like when you when you try to uh de-res a complex this is it can you still make it out <laughs> Can you still make out what it is? <laughs> Anyways. It's really a lot more involved than most people may think. Like, drawing it 
is I think is the easier part. Yeah, like it, it's relatively easy to troll it. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. But um, it's everything else. It's uh, all the other limitations. Okay, so let's draw the other elements. Uh, I need to compose. I need to compose this. All right. <clears throat> like if it only took me a couple months of like inconsistent a couple months worth of time like literal time i don't know how much couple of months of time is 24 days times 30 let's just say 30 600 720 hours times three i would say if it takes me like 2000 hours to get to this point you have to think about what the competition is when you start doing artwork like this I mean, I'm below, I would consider myself below average in terms of the way spatial and visual, like visual reproduction. So if it took me around 2000 hours to get to this level, which is to the point it's marketable and sellable is once I color this, which there's a very specific limitation to coloring emotes too. You can't go beyond a certain complexity um and it's only two thousand hours you have to wonder how many people can achieve that point in two thousand hours like um a career that i i considered a career that barely pays thirty dollars an hour i've spent over 15 years of time to get to that point so you start can you start having perspective you know all this stuff gives you perspective on how disproportionate careers are and how competitive they are in terms of their entry how, how much is required and their ultimate value that people perceive actually I kind of want to change this line I keep looking at it and it's a little high is still really things are I, I would agree to those people who think that things are simple but because they're simple they're hard that might sound a little oxymoronic but only I, I feel like only individuals who have gone through the process of pursuing a professional career would understand that statement wholeheartedly solutions products things look simple because professionals make it look simple but behind all of that is the intrinsic difficulty to appreciate how hard it is to maintain it Because all that stuff is invisible. You don't see the process of getting there. You see the final product. And just recently, um, I had another, I had a conversation with someone about how they trivialize how stupid things are and whatnot. And I even found myself in it as well but every time i say that stuff i think oh yeah right still kind of difficult to forget uh that some people spent years working on the product <clears throat> um okay anyways um i don't know how they do this Okay, so it's kind of like they start with a line, right? So if we gauge this, so say these are our lines, right? Okay, so we know that the, the marks
let's say like this, right? So those are our guiding lines. They're kind of like very specifically parallel too, but with an angle. So now you have to like draw on top of these paths. And I have no idea. Is there a specific pattern to it? There's no direction. At least I don't see a direction. They kind of look like lightning bolts, but not really. How do you get... How do you create those? Maybe I should zoom in. <clears throat> I haven't ever made like a... Uh... Yeah, here's where some people would probably say, well, you just do this and then and then get it to taper off, right? Actually, that doesn't look too bad. <laughs> it's like, hey, look, there's there's a claw mark, right? I'm, I'm just kidding, obviously, but I feel like that's how they did it. It, it kind of looks like that way. There's no direction, so they're not like... Um, doing a tear direction I almost want to do that like so say the claw goes in this direction right the claw mark I almost want to make everything this direction so that it's you can see the, di the direction of the slash right so what I mean is all the all the things are pointing in that direction but the claw thing is going in this direction but that's not what they did most most just make it slightly irregular but they also did not make it so that it looks like the thing comes back like it assembles back so for example if i made a kink like this here then the other side has to be this way, right? Because of the two pieces. So they didn't make it in like a puzzle manner. Or did they? Hold up. No, no. So they didn't make it into a puzzle map. Manner. You just ignore that. I'm also looking at like some real tears. Like uh, an actual cloth, like a picture of a cloth that has a tear through it. But I think that's too difficult. Okay, so they also did a back to it, which I will do a back. The reason why I have a comp behind it, you can show that something is in front. And something is back when you have a comp behind it. So I'm not doing like just a flat surface and then you're just coloring in the shading. That's pretty easy and rudimentary right now for myself. So I wouldn't be like learning anything new here. But this scratch is really... Okay, so let's try it. So we want to taper. And then, I don't know if this is the best. I don't know how they... See, it's not, it's not doing the... Th not quite there. Maybe we just draw straight lines. So like... I can't, I can't double back on things, so. And it's, it kind of gets wider in the center. So now I need to see the whole thing, right? doesn't quite it just doesn't quite okay 
Maybe I need like a, a few longer lines in it. So like... Oh, that's it. Well, we should not uh, go. Okay, going. Okay, so we need to keep extending. What I'm doing. It's it's too smooth now. I don't understand it. Um. Does it ever go back? It does go back a little. Every once in a while. But overall, the shape has to increase in girth. So, like, um... Let's put another line here. So... I need to do this because it's not helping me visualize. So... So what I'm trying to visualize is this. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this overall shape but now you're trying your hardest not to go backwards when you're doing this And you see what I mean? Like, it doesn't look like... <laughs> it just doesn't look right. I, I don't understand how they're doing that. I guess they have some other irregularities too. So, like, um... Okay, so there's like slight... Alright, let's see. They do this a lot. This is what happens when you, in my opinion, this is what happens when you take someone who is more, more analytical and attempt to get a form. And now I'm like over, I'm like overdoing it. And there's also a lot of like bumps. There's a lot of scratches too. So we... Uh, let's keep these iterations though. So, um, let's try it again. So we have these things, like the little tail end stuff, right? And then we have, like, in between. And then there's like a, a little bit of really long pieces. I almost feel like um, if I just continue to make this like super you just keep adding more and more lines that makes things really hard though. Too. Okay, I've been doing this a little too regularly. They're too evenly spaced out is what's creating this problem. So yeah, now now it's too evenly spaced out. I keep uh I keep choosing the same place. So now it's looking like it's very Okay, let's try something else. Let's try to do...
That doesn't make sense. Like those, those, yeah, that stuff doesn't make sense. <laughs> I mean, hmm. It's so weird. Why why am I struggling? I am struggling with this. Okay. It's largely because it's all straight lines, which... Yeah, there's largely... Uh, there's some curving. Maybe, maybe that's why it looks weird to me. I, uh... Oh, those those are some those don't make sense. All right, I wow, I I need to I need to look at more examples. <laughs> I definitely need to look at more examples. This that that that's not sufficient right there. Okay, like a what what is missing? Why does this not look? I think I might need to, yeah, I might need to see. Okay. So the tears, right? Also has, it's not looking right because I need both sides as well, so. And the tears are more like this. They're more along the groove. Yo, this looks, this is way harder than it looks, okay? I, uh, hmm. Uh, honestly, my most satisfying, like, My most satisfying one is where I just like wiggle around. Maybe, maybe that's why. <laughs> Let's just hold up. Uh, I can't do that. Formless, just. Just make sure that it tapers near the end. <sighs> oh 
I mean, it looks better than <laughs> anything I've done so far. All right. That, that's we're gonna that's what we're gonna do right we're gonna be intuitive about this oh no and then Oh no, I messed up again. <laughs> is that the secret sauce? The sauce is I'm thinking too much about form. And I should just abandon the form. Honestly, that's probably it, right? Just, just stop thinking about form. Yeah, you see? You see what I mean? some things this is why uh in my opinion this is why okay i still need the other guidelines though because i need to guide my hand i'm just drawing like perspective lines to guide the length the the, the girth I have this uh I have this problem of like um uh things appear a lot wider like I drift a lot okay I do not want to go backwards though I gotta make sure I don't go backwards Oh no, I tripped on the wrong layer. <sighs> send help. Actually, I kind of want to... Someone send help. I'm about to lose my mind on something so simple. <laughs> or may may appear very simple. Have you ever wondered what it feels like to be inside my head? That's that's it. This this is why, uh, in my opinion, artwork is amazing because people feel these things out. They intuit these things. I I break things down so often that uh, it's difficult for me to intuit or trust my own intuition. If you, if you really think you're a very logical person. That I, I think this exercise would be very difficult for, for someone that's very logical. Because <laughs> while I try to find form in most of this, there really is, there really isn't like the biggest amount of form. And what you're really looking for is art has like this great appreciation for trying to find the simple shapes like looking for the principal shapes why is why did why was i so aggressive with this here i didn't keep my hand steady but, uh it's the pen velocity so the pen velocity makes that groove, which is, I was trying to be, yeah. So the pen, uh, the pen that I'm using also has a velocity on it. So if I go too fast, which is what, what I did here, it creates that, uh, curve.
So I tr have to try not to like go too fast. It looks relatively reasonable, right? I just have to, one of the key things I'm seeing is um, definitely you want to be uh, sis uh, not systematic. I can't believe I just said the word systematic with this. Um, you want to be steady. So interestingly enough, it's almost like a clawing. Like it's it's one like the beginning is very smooth because the claw enters and it's kind of like starting up, right? So it's slow. It's slow, and it the the give makes it faster. That's why. Um, it's almost mimicking the pen pattern where you're you're trying to go at a steady rate you're not trying to blitz it which is the opposite of how i draw actually at the moment like these lines these are just high velocity oops gotta make sure i'm on the right layer here so there are some i'm breaking down this uh claw stuff and I guess really all you need is the cone. Yeah, you just need the cone. And that's the relative shape that you you want. And then the rest is fairly just deliberately being unsteady on your hand, which is ironic, which is not ironic, uh, which is counterintuitive because generally speaking, most of the time when you're drawing, you're more going for the... You're looking for steady hands. But now, I'm deliberately making my hand unsteady. It's weird because... If you think I'm doing this deliberately... Like, hey, oh, it's easy because... Hands are typically unsteady. Right? I spent so much time studying my hands that I have to do this deliberately. Oh no, I drew it on the wrong layer. <laughs> so I'm making these things, but I'm deliberately jiggling my hand while I'm doing this. I'm trying to fill out I think artwork is so fascinating when you're trying to analyze it. <laughs> it's so it's such a fun exercise. I I have a I have a shortcut. I have a shortcut. I'm think I'm I'm like at the moment I'm thinking about a shortcut to creating the edge lighting. Petitious might consider it cheating, but shh. Logical people. Okay, logical people. Do less work, you know? Work, uh, work smart, not hard. Or at least really, really try to. Right, that wasn't when I decided on an approach that wasn't too bad uh, this guy kind of needs to be moved a little oppositionally it's actually kind of want to space these out a little bit more I drift in girth so then then they don't look like they're going they don't look even anymore What I mean is, I, I still want some form. So the spacing requires some form. There we go. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby. It uh, I, I needed to stop being periodic with it. I'm a very periodic person though. 
Um, what could improve here is I could have drawn the initial guidelines with more of a bend, like a slight more bend so that it looks like it, it's a little more interesting if it had a little more curve to it, an overall curve. I think it's pretty decent. And that is the breakdown and now I will forever remember how to make claw marks. Whoa, like claw marks like this. Does it? Yeah. So what did I learn from this? Um, entry and exit is higher velocity, so it's very smooth, right? That's one of the elements that kind of sells it not being a lightning bolt or something or like a stream or something. And then the center, you just have to capture like a croissant. How do, how do they, how do the people say it like very snobbily? Croissant or I forgot, uh, there, I watched a YouTube short that kept making fun of the idea of how people order croissants at a, at a, like, I don't know, like a Starbucks or something. And the guy was like saying it as obnoxiously as possible. <laughs> I've got the comme like the YouTuber's name, but, um, he does these things a lot. Okay. So I have a cheat, I think. Oh no, maybe I don't have a cheat for this. I don't think it's going to work the way I want it to work. Hold up. So there's another dimension to the stuff. We need to figure out how to create the cloth. Edging. And it's only on one end. So, uh, I can cheat here instead of going back painstakingly doing it I can duplicate and we can do an off access thing and then we can correct the off access and it, it depends on where our directional lighting is so um, we should synchronize the lighting so I want the lighting to come from the top right because my back com composition is top right as well. Or I want the lighting to be the top right. I composed the emote facing this direction, a little angle to the top right for a very specific reason, because I want the directional lighting to be that way. So if that is the case, then I also want the light direction of this to be that way too. If it's that way, then I would probably it would probably be a little bit more pleasing if I offset this way. It's a little harder um, to imagine it this way. I mean, because I made the claw marks this way. If I did it this way, if I mirror image it, it probably hit better. But I want the claw marks to be in the direction of the light. So then it's a little bit more dynamic because the top half is going to be like really bright and then I can apply a gradient and it gets darker as it's going to the bottom left. So there'd be a dynamic range in the edge thing. This might all sound like it doesn't matter. Like it's just a simple prompt, but I like to practice. I like to practice the, th the process, even if it's a trivial thing. Practice makes perfect, or practice makes habit is probably the phrase I would go with. The more you habit form, the more it's less and less, it takes up less and less resource, the more you repeat it. The 
we're gonna go back now. And we're gonna... Since the directional lighting is top right, we're just gonna finagle a little and just... Pretend... That... We only see one of the edges. Technically we don't. We see like half the edges. Actually, maybe maybe that's the way to go. Hold up. How can I make this? How can I sell this better? Oh, maybe I do the this thing. I got an idea. So we do this. We take uh whoops. So we take uh arbitrarily whoops. Arbitrarily we take dang it. I keep forgetting. I should be using Stop it. How do I was it shift click? No. Is it alt? Oh, it is alt. Wait, wait. No, it's not alt. What the heck? All right, all right, please stop. Not alt. Okay. No, alt doesn't stop it, doesn't return it. How do you tether backwards? Isn't that what the minus sign means? What? How come I can't? All right. It must be because of the pen, right? What if I remove this? Pen? No? What? Dude, these controls don't make any sense. To me, at the moment. That's the minus sign. It's all- Oh! I'm not supposed to hold it down! Wait. No, that didn't do- Never mind. How do I cancel? Oh no. I don't understand how tools work. All right, so we'll just w worry about that later. Okay, so I think we can make this look interesting if we take, what the, oh. If we take this, we take the halfway point. So we just gonna arbitrarily diagonalize this. Wow, I can't draw triangles. It's fine. This is good enough. It's... Uh, no, it, it really isn't good enough. <laughs> okay, alright, alright. Let's 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 try this again. Landscape. We're get, we gotta think about landscape. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take this, right? This has become so much more complicated. Honestly, we don't have to delete anything. It's probably where I'm getting at. You know, we can fix the edges. Hmm.
Yeah, see what most people do. They align the lines opposite. So they would flip this. Yeah, what they would do is they would flip the image. They, or they would mirror the image and then have the light hit from one angle. So like instead make it easier you easy on myself, I would imagine the light coming from the top left. So that it would hit one fold and would miss the other fold. Hmm. Just fill it in and see how. We'll probably adjust. Um. <sighs> Something else is problematic too. There's a taper to all the edges. Do I want to taper into the edges? Like find the ends to this hmm oh whoops wait what the what just happened okay Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Actually. Dude, vectoring this would be the bee's knees. Yeah, oh man, this is... Hold up. No, I, ha I I would have to. Oh, no, no, that's not happening. You know what? It's looking directly at it. We'll, we'll just make the scratch. <laughs> All this matters, guys. All this matters. Just trying to figure out what I can do. Um... Oh, do I do? Wait, maybe. Maybe what I really want to do is... Does that create the same results? Holy eyes. Oh, no. My eyes is not equipped to doing this. Oh, no. Wait, how the... Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, wait. Okay. Everyone hold. This is what I want to do. Does it create the same results? <sighs> right. Let's just find out. Let's just find out. I I think I think this is the thing I want. 
but... Let's find out. Except for the ends. The ends, this would not work for the ends, for sure. How do people... Mm, I'm gonna... I, I wanna... I'm gonna have to look up how people do... Um, how people do uh, edge lighting for extremely complicated things. Like, uh, like very... Do they just trace over them? There's gotta be a faster way. Because then you have like buildings and stuff, right? Do you want to really go over with hand all the building parts? Hmm. I'm uh, learning a lot of deficiencies that I have right now, which is great because now I have to think about tutorials and stuff I can, I can look for to try to solve these problems that I have because there's no way I can reproduce this edge, right? I mean, I don't really have to. Technically, I don't really have to. I could just add edges arbitrarily by coloring over them. I kind of want a hard edge on both sides. It's why I'm doing it this way. It doesn't line up perfectly though. Like it wouldn't be the edge I would do manually. But it would be, this is a quick offset though to creating the edge. And then I would like accent the folds randomly. So this might be too precise. It doesn't create like the... Uh, once I start painting it, I'll have to look at how it looks. It could just be irregular. I could just make it irregular. Like some spots are big, some spots are small. Like the folds could just be random, pretty random, but... Which is kind of created here. So... Because I did it this way, there's still some irregularities, like here. So it's already introducing that. But the, I, the problem with this approach is... It looks so identical that your eyes can pick, out, pick it up that it's identical. I don't... And how I drew the original scratches could also make the this like duplication process look a little bit more noisy because we're trying to introduce noise into this as well <sighs> lots to think about That's okay. We'll think about it next time. I, I mean, I won't be drawing something like this for a while, but it could be used... Like, the tricks could be, you know, like the... These different types of approaches could be used for other things in the future. Do like my tricks. I will not use the word hacks, okay? This, these are not hacks. These are... These are tricks. Freaking hacks. Oh, I, I'm not calling the people hacks, I'm just saying. I, I don't particularly like the pet... Uh, the legacy of the word hacks these days. Hacks make it sound like they'll solve things. Solve problems. Like soft life problems there the bees needs these are just little things that i probably do i do this a lot and I'm, this is not something new or i don't do this a lot but this is not something i have never done before where you take the image you duplicate and then you do an off-axis shadow 
where you do an off axis outline especially for vector images if you ever make a vector image you can take the vector image duplicate it offset it then go back in the vector and uh and so so now you don't have to draw all these like crazy irregular lines and then you go back and what you do is you shift the points that are kind of like overlapping and then you get that noisy look so like you would go back to your vector and you can manually move these points to a different spot and that's how at least that's how i would approach making logos and stuff i've done this before but just as guides because usually by the end these ones right here actually maybe hard edges some of these would be faded in a way and i think it would be this one so the interior ones would be faded a little bit because they're going to go into darkness, so to speak, into the darkness. I would probably put these at like 25%. No, maybe I should. Eh, we'll see. And then now we have to color the whole thing. So, uh, yep. Yep, yep. Okay. The problem with this is it doesn't alleviate it doesn't alleviate that I, I also have to color the thing underneath as well but we're only coloring in the sections um you know i don't even know what my character's colors are anymore that's how long it's been Let's try to eyeball the dude. I made him more brownish than... Okay. Let's take a pastel, like medium ground, so... I definitely gravitated more towards the brown than how a lot of people choose to do it, which is to make it really red looking. It might be a little, it might not be. I definitely didn't, I, I definitely gravitated towards a little bit more Maybe like even even maybe centered. No. Probably a little more saturated, perhaps. How does that look? Why does that look so vanilla -y? Okay. What the? Am I not selecting a color right now? Hello? There's no way that's the right... There's... Wait. I don't think this color is changing while I'm... What the? Yeah, it's not changing right now. Or... Is there like a... What the? I think I'm getting debated here. Ah, just stick to this. Oh wait. Yeah, well, okay. Sure. Wow, this is so much lighter than... I feel like my, uh, my monitor it's not changing colors, I swear. It's I don't think it's changing colors. I can't tell. Oh. 
I, I don't want to talk about it. I, I don't want to talk about it at all. Oh my gosh, I just realized what I did. Right. Hopefully no one noticed what I did. I was on the wrong layer. So this layer is at 50% opacity. So almost all the colors are blending together is because it's a uh, transparent. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna color the whole thing. Usually I would probably do the whole thing, but uh, today we're, this took way longer than I was expecting. So we're already behind. Or behind by at least an hour. And I ranted a little bit. That's okay. Don't remember what brow. Oh, I just realized. Does it really matter? I did end up putting another layer before. Let's go. So, what I'm seeing, the... Oh my gosh I'm not sure if those are if that's dust from my screen or is that actually the coloring that's gonna be a little problematic because I didn't I wasn't very uh, honest with my whoops I have to color minimal details. That's all good. It's all good in the neighborhood. Whoops. See this little section right here, there was another like fold. I, I usually add a third fold here with a darker color, but uh, we're gonna forego that for now because. Oh, never mind. Yeah, and that's why. Oh, it was because it was white on white. I used uh, I used a second fold to separate the two white portions. I guess for now we'll, we won't do that because the brow and this part I made I made the that part the middle part smaller so then I added like a third thing to separate the white the extended white brow with the white of the muzzle area but instead, we're just going to today. We're just going to rely on color contrast. Yeah, because these two would be next to each other. 
and I deliberately uh, drew a like a, a second fluff layer on the face so that it would separate these two layers to keep the contrast I mean to keep the different color from repeating next to each other alternatively I could use a different offset of um, black and white yeah like so this thing is actually behind this thing right but they're both the same color technically I, I prevented that by adding an extra element I personally, I'm not a, to my specific approach, I don't usually use, um, I don't usually use the same colors next to each other. But you, you can offset that with like shadowing and occlusion and stuff. Like now, like the eyes and the nose would also be black. Like a, 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 like a volume of black. But to offset those, I generally go the base color. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. The base color would be shifted 75% denser for the nose and the eyes, which are still adjacent to this muzzle which is still the same black and white. So all this stuff is really important to me, in my opinion. It makes the composition a little bit more reliant on specifically the volume, like the dynamic range. And I kind of like the colors to be a little bit more separated. It's not important to other people, probably, but it's important to me. I like, I like it that way. It's my personal style, I suppose. We did kill two birds with one stone today, though. Ooh, we have. A slight option to put in some backlighting. Hmm. Huh. I have to think about that. Yeah, and then the ears. Oops. And then the ears. What's going on? What the heck is happening? Oh, I'm on eraser. Okay, I thought they fixed that. I thought they added like an icon in the middle of the eraser to remind people that you're on the eraser. I need to turn that feature on. If it is a feature. Um... Okay, guess we'll, we'll stick with we'll stick with like the same palette of gray for now. Cause the light is coming from the top right, and this side is really far away from that light sword. We'll think about it. We'll think about it later. And then we kind of want it white up here, but I have a white background. So that makes it a little awkward. Oh yeah, we're gonna need those line. We're gonna need that line drawing back up to full speed. Oh, I do have to blank out the back too. 
Whoops. So we need to do that as well. We should have colored in the back. How do I do that? Oh. Um. I have to color in the back, but it also has to be on top of the lines. Oh no, now I have a problem. I guess I, I'm just going to manually <laughs> go through it. I didn't think this through. I mean, no surprise, I suppose. It is kind of fun thinking if how would I would compose this first, right? How I would compose this first and then start uh, doing the practical stuff. Because um, right now I'm doing this backwards from what I would normally do. I would color the whole thing just like straight up color the... The whole back thing then I would uh, place the the scratch like the claw marks oh on top of the thing so I'm coincidentally doing it more even closer to the practical way than doing it the digital way which you just simply Fill in all the color block in the back. And you don't really have to do any like lighting or contrast because the the scratches, like the claw mark, is gonna provide the dynamic range it from one perspective. And then um, you go back and you apply lighting from behind. So then you would get like two different sets of lighting dynamics. You would get the lighting, the one directional lighting that's hitting the claw marks in the cloth. And you would also get the lighting on the subject behind the claw marks. From the top left. Combined. Actually... We won't really have to do that. Well, that would suggest that, um, hmm. What color is the fabric? What would be a good fabric color? Hmm. Oh no, I just realized because of the where the claw marks are, I, I don't actually you can't actually really oh, okay, so I would have to make the claw marks bigger is it too late to do that? I could make the fabric semi-transparent. But that would also involve... Oh my gosh. Oh no, that's too complicated. Oh no. We have a problem. Okay, alright. I should have just done it in the first place. <laughs> I should have just done it in the first place. Alright. <laughs> Scratch. 
scratch everything I just did and we're just gonna go and yes bunch of papega You know, no, never mind. I keep forgetting. Well, you know, let's look at Magic Wand. Let's see. Is this? How do you add? Is it Alt? No. Is it? Uh, oh no! Is it? No. Okay. Shift is plus. How do I minus? Okay. Oh, it's it's treated as a whole thing. Yeah, see. I need to find a way. Whoops. I need to find a way to select my type of line drawing. Kind of a Select my type of line drawing without having to do this. I feel like I'm the least, like, I am in, in inept, I'm an inept digital artist, like, a, an extremely inept digital artist who just simply do not use the tools that are available to them. I don't invest the time. And end up doing pretty much most of the stuff manually. Or at least an analog. Yeah. At least I picked out all the colors already. Silver lining. I want the like the the scratch thing to look dynamic or like a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna make it like semi semi translucent. Like it's kind of like a C it's kind of like a thin fabric, not a not a uh Not an impermeable fabric, like you, you should be able to see some light going through it. So we'll at least be able to see the dude. Wait, I'm curious how this works. Do I have two colors on top of each other? Does the alpha spill over? It does spill over. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That's what... I was wondering... I was reminding myself why I... Uh, trace, like, why I do the... I, why I approach it the same way. It's because uh, it treats any of the alphas as contiguous. We're back to square one. 
back to where the approach that I would have taken in the first place. I mean, of course that's the approach. I probably that's probably what I did last time too. Thought about it, had a, had a bunch of times like, oh wait, that doesn't make sense. It's just gonna make so many other steps harder, or more time consuming rather, not necessarily harder, just time consuming. I had this wild dream yesterday or today it's it made me like really panic perhaps I'll share it later this is the back of a hand so typically the back portion of red pandas are the same generally the same color as the but then they're like their paws typically black but I don't want to give him white paws but that would Put it in the same. Does that draw enough? Doesn't draw enough contrast in this in this comp. So we're just gonna. This is probably what we're gonna end up doing. In the in the final emo product too. dark or do I go the white route we'll think about it in the future if we're gonna go like the white gradient or or do a black gradient for now we'll stick with this Probably it's a better contrast The hands are not quite right, but it's fine. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, oh, wait, but the stomach is black. Hmm. Maybe we're gonna go white after all. Or maybe we go in between. Hmm. Flanked by the face. The orange is fine. So the shoulder and stuff is fine. Do like the traditional stuff, really, really traditional stuff. 
is a uh, Okay. Um uh Wait, maybe I should do the... How do I do what people... Is it a... No, 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 that's not what I want. Um... We're gonna have to try this next time. I wanted to do... I wanted to test this, uh... I wanted to do a mask. Or... I wanted to try to do a mask thing. Instead of choosing the colors manually. future. <laughs> we'll do it in the future. We'll push it off. Push off the responsibilities. I definitely have a different perspective now than I did before when I was highlighting. Generally, I would abandon all the rules. But now it's hard to unsee, unsee what I used to do. Um, actually. This part is actually fine.
I guess I might as well do a decent job so I have a good reference for when I go back and when I do it for the final final product. a sec hmm oh this one is kind of big Yeah, I should have just like drawn a second one here, but now I'm like confusing the two. Like these should be like, uh, yeah, now I'm confusing the two. I guess I could finagle a little.
Oh, but the lips would be... Mmm... Would be like the other direction? Yeah, we'll see. Alright, I'm gonna take a break from this. And finish this in a bit. Alright. Um. the other way I'm, I'm thinking of it it's the other way I should be making the spot on the left bigger yeah okay all right um oh gosh offers is losing battlegrounds rating <laughs> Uh... 